I'm Sarah Wertheimer. I'm the Executive Director of Embracing Our Differences. I'm born and raised in Sarasota County, grew up in Sarasota County Public Schools, and I'm extremely passionate about exposing our community to the concepts of diversity and inclusion. Embracing Our Differences began 20 years ago. We were a traveling art exhibit that was brought here by Museum on the Seam in Jerusalem, Israel, brought here by the Florida Holocaust Museum. It was supposed to be a one-time thing for our community, but our community members thought it was too important. This is something we have to do every year. I think diversity is different people, different perspectives, attributes, and talents, and bringing all of that together, hopefully, to make the world better for all of us. Sarasota is getting more diverse. Uh, we are relatively diverse. Are we inclusive? Uh, that's another question. I think that inclusion is belonging. It's something that we all crave, whether you're a child going into a new classroom or an adult going into any new room or experience, you want that sense of belonging. And I think that's really what inclusion is for all of us. I think Sarasota is striving to be a very inclusive community. We aren't there yet. We have a ways to go before everyone in this community really has a voice. There are so many stories in Sarasota to show our diversity, whether it's, it's in your classroom with different kids coming together and, and not even recognizing the differences amongst them, but still being best friends, or you have adults doing the exact same thing. But then we also have situations where adults and, and kids are not willing and able to have a conversation with someone who might think differently from them or have a different personal experience or background. In South Sarasota County, it's been very diverse for many years, especially with an Eastern European immigration population that's been growing over the years. So when you go to schools in South Sarasota County, you walk into a classroom and you see people represented from all different countries, all different backgrounds, religions, and, and they're really able to all work together and live together as one. You don't see that in every area of our community. My definition of racism is individuals who aren't willing to look beyond someone's physical attributes, whether that might be their color or something else. And unfortunately, they have a lot of presuppositions. They, they don't always go into it with an open mind. And sadly, that's where so many disgusting things result from racism. Racism is sadly too prevalent in our world and in our community here in Sarasota. It's something that we can't deny exists and we need to all confront head on Otherwise, we're going to continue this horrible cycle over and over and over again. Sarasota is definitely not exempt from a lot of the hate crimes and the rise in anti-Semitism, anti-Black hate, transphobia, and everything else that we are seeing on a daily basis in our own community and around the world. So I do think that we've seen personal examples of that, whether it was recent attacks on the Jewish community with paraphernalia and propaganda that was distributed to a ton of homes throughout our area, or whether it's day-to-day -day things in the classroom, the words that kids are saying to one another because they're repeating what they heard from their parents. In the schools, I see two different sides. I see one side that gives me so much hope for the future because I see kids that really do want to be with kids who are different from them, want to experience their life, their culture, and, and all of the different unique attributes that they bring to the table. But then we do also see a lot of bullying. Bullying is not something new. We all know that, but it's only gotten more dangerous with social media, and it's only increased as kids soak up everything that they hear from their parents, and they bring it back into the classroom, and they bring it back into social media and constantly torment one another. Teen suicide rates amongst LGBTQ plus teens are much higher than other students, than other kids. And this is something that they're dealing with that's only been exacerbated by social media and by that incessant bullying that they can no longer escape from. You used to be able to go home and be in your safer, more comfortable place with your family and friends supporting you, and that's no longer the case. Through a lot of our programs in the schools, specifically those that really focus on mental health, we hear stories from our kids all the time about the struggles that they're going through and how alone they feel, and unfortunately, how many times they've attempted to commit suicide and someone hasn't been there for them. When we sit down and have these group discussions, they're able to actually have that confidence to stand up, walk across the room, befriend this individual who has just shared this incredibly emotional story, hug them and say, I'm here for you. When you're here on campus and you're having a horrible day and you don't know how you're going to get through the next day, come find me and I'll help you. I'll stand up for you against this kid who's attacking you constantly. I'm here. 
you're not alone. Both of my parents grew up in Sarasota County schools, and my mom was here when schools were integrated when she was in middle school. And she remembers how traumatic that experience was for her and all of the other students. And the things that they were hearing outside the schools when kids were starting to come in that very first day, it was disgusting. And fortunately, my mom knew better, but so many other people around her did not. Here in Sarasota, we've seen a ton of anti-Semitic crimes over the past just two years alone, looking at swastikas that have been painted throughout multiple temples and different Jewish community centers. In addition to that, we had pamphlets that were distributed to a lot of homes that were blaming the COVID-19 pandemic on Jews, that were blaming racism on Jews, that were blaming pretty much anything they could on the Jewish community. So we see this coming back time and time again, different anti-Semitic tropes. Living in Sarasota as a Jewish woman, as a woman who's leading a diversity and inclusion education organization, I do worry when I'm out in public and I'm wearing a t-shirt that says embracing our differences on it. I'm worried who's going to respond negatively, who's going to come up to me and try to have a conversation or something maybe much worse. So it is something that's now always in the back of my head when it didn't used to be. Acceptance to me, is bringing everyone together, is not paying attention to the things that divide us, but instead looking at what that person has that, that can bring our group and our community to the next level and can really help us thrive. I think there are so many ways that we can each continue to learn and grow as we go throughout life. I don't think that the way we're brought up or things we learned from a friend or a family member have to stay with us forever. I think we all have the ability to change, but a lot of it comes to getting to know someone who's different from you. It's exposure. It's meeting people with different opinions and different perspectives that can really help change your outlook on life. Community is diverse individuals and perspectives and opinions all coming together to better ourselves, to better our friends and our family. I think that diversity is what makes a community thrive. That having all of these different attributes and talents at that same decision-making table, that's what actually makes a community thrive, representation. What we need today is we need our kids to not only be learning about math and writing and science, which are all extremely important, but we also need them to learn how to work with one another, how to treat one another with respect, and how to live and work in a society where people are different from one another. And where you understand that those differences can really be positive. They don't have to be something that causes hatred and division like they're currently causing today. I don't think you can compare Sarasota to any other community, especially any community our size. We're extremely unique in our artistic abilities here and what we have to show in this beautiful setting that we're in right now, but that surrounds us at all times. Sarasota is extremely unique. My favorite part about growing up in Sarasota is being surrounded by a lot of my family and friends and always feeling that sense of community always feeling like you're in a small town, but big enough to still have experiences that you might not have in a small town. When I look at impactful organizations in our community, I look at both of the Ringlings. I look at Ringling Museum and Ringling College of Art and Design. Larry Thompson, what he's been able to do with Ringling College of Art and Design and make it one of the number one art schools in our country is just phenomenal. The people that he brings here because of that, it, it's what makes our community rich. And then to add to that, the incredibly gorgeous museum of Ringling Museum and everything that Stephen High has been able to accomplish there, I, I think they're just two gems in our community. We have so many dedicated people in our community who are really working every day to better the community. And one of those people for me is Judge Charles Williams. He is not only the chair of my organization, but he is a mentor in every way but he has also dedicated himself to diversity and inclusion from almost day one of his private practice. And, and he helped start the Sarasota County's Bar Association's Diversity and Inclusion Council. And, and he just lives and breathes this mission and is trying to make this a more equal community and in a more equal world for all of us. Embracing Our Differences has been around for 20 years now, and it's grown exponentially over the years. We started out really just as an art exhibit that was here once a year for the whole community. And the education program is now where the majority of our time, energy, and resources are spent. 
in the schools, working with the kids and teachers every day throughout the school year, that's where the real work is done. And that's where we've been able to see the change in the classroom culture and the school culture to really make it feel more welcoming and inclusive when a kid comes into school. A student shouldn't be worried about who's gonna be picking on them today. Instead, they should be able to focus on their academics. But when they're constantly fearful of bullying, they're not able to thrive in that same way. And so that's where our program comes in, is to try to build up the self-esteem and confidence in our youngest kids. So that they can not only stand up against the bully, bullying themselves, but they can be there to stand up for a friend. I think that there are so many different people and political systems at play in order to make Sarasota a truly integrated and inclusive community. I think that we're making progress and we're, we're getting there little by little, but we still have a ways to go. To the future residents of Sarasota, I wanna ask you to please come here with an open mind and open heart and really try to get to know one another. Open up your eyes to this beautiful and diverse world around you and just bring it all to the same table, to the same couch and enjoy it together.